Hey everyone, it's Tiffany from Let's Get Scrappy and we are back with part two of our 8x8 um, mini album where I used um, Simple Stories Boho Baby collection from uh, my design team package from Country Craft Creations. So in part two, which I know is going to drive a whole bunch of people crazy that I'm doing the cover last, it's okay. <laughs> Not that big of a deal. <laughs> But we are going to do the cover. The reason why I'm doing the cover last is because, you know, a lot of people are already in album making, know how to make the covers. But for those that are newbies, I wanted to make sure I add that on for you. And that way I will have a video just to link along with any of my other projects because doing the cover just is that much more time, extends the video so we are just going to do it separate. So if you already watched the first tutorial part one where I talked about the chipboard pieces and I don't know why I chose black for this one, but I did. But for white, normally I use the craft cardstock or actually, or not cardstock, craft chipboard or I have actually white chipboard. So I have black, white and craft in my stash. But um, I, I wouldn't recommend using black on white. You can see it because the Artisan cardstock definitely gives full coverage, so it's not that big of a deal. But if you do go off on a corner like I did right there, I had to fix my little boo-boo. Um, and I do have a little bit showing right there, but it will get covered when we do the spine with this lay flat method. So just a tip tip for you. <laughs> Don't wear you know, a black bra under a white t-shirt, just saying. So, <laughs> I know, I just, I go too far, I'm just, yep. Mm -hmm. So you are going to take two pieces that are 10 by 10 because our chipboard is eight by eight and one piece for the spine that for me, I did one and a half by eight, but you can do any size you want to depending on how chunky you want your book to be. So, I'm going to go ahead and do this one with you, and I did get my score sheets from Country Craft Creations. I love the score sheets for covers. I will use glue on pages and everything else, but I will not sacrifice my covers. So I know that there's, you know, some people out there that love doing glue on their covers, and that's fine. I go crazy if there's bubbles because of the glue not being in certain spots, or you hear like you literally can hear when it's not adhered on the cover. So that's just me. But score sheets, I will link below. You can get them at Country Craft Creations. I keep them on hand for covers only. I absolutely love them. So, oh, why? I see, I don't even know what I'm doing. Okay, I'm taking this out so I can score this. We want to do, um, and this is just me. So, you can use your, um, oh my gosh, I just forgot what they're called, spacers from Country Craft Creations if you have those. I don't have those currently, so I just do old school. And I mean, literally, you can just eyeball it too. Totally up to you how you want to do it. I think we should play a game of how many times Tiffany says totally in all her videos because I must have been a valley girl back in the day because I totally say that so much. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> Welcome to the comedy show. I just think I'm so funny. I crack myself up. Okay. So I just scored an inch on each, or on two sides, so like an L. And literally, that means nothing. It's just a guide for me. So, you know, I have it in here. I can put my chipboard. Nope, not doing that. Where is it at? Okay, it's right there. I was about to put it all the way up to the top. That's what we're going to do when we put the spine on. So I'm just following the score mark. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just using it as a guide so I somewhat have an inch all the way around. And then I'm going to take my score tape. Let me see where my other tool is. Hmm. I just had it with me. Oh, no, it's right in front of me. Oh my gosh, who does that where we're looking for everything on our crafting tables and it's literally in front of our faces. So now here is where 
You can glue, you don't have to use score tape. You can do quarter inch, quarter inch. I just find it easy and saves time. Because if you don't know, Tiff does not have tons of spare time with everything that I do. So I like to have the fastest routes possible on some things. So I'm just putting this on each side and then we'll go back and burnish this down. Like so. And I definitely like to make sure this is burnished really good. Let's see a little bubble there. There we go. Got the bubble out. And for those that are about to ask, because I do get asked a lot, so I have multiple of these. I got this from Ginger from my sister Scrapper, who is not here anymore, but I love her and miss her so much. But um, she literally got me hooked on this. So I just find, it's by Little B, I find cheap washi tape. I do not need any more washi tape. But I will find it like clearance somewhere. This was only $2 and $2 is worth it for me. And I will just show you. Um, it's usually sealed. Yes, it's sealed. So this is one that I found at a store that was that's going out of business here. I just take that off. And then I come through. And where it says to snip, I just snip it. And now I have a blade. But you do not have to have this. You can use this. This works just fine. Um, a stamping block works fine. Some people can rip with their hands. I cannot, but that's how I got this, in case you guys are wondering. So I have lots of these. Um, and literally, I just will find the cheapest one on sale somewhere. Clearance. Doesn't matter what the washi tape looks like, because I don't need the washi tape. <laughs> I'm just buying it for a tool. So just uh, another little tip tip for you. Okay, I'm gonna try not to cut in as close as I did before because this is black cardstock. And if you do um, cut too close and you could see the, the black or any, any of the chipboard, you could take one of your cut off corners, glue it in. So just do a dry fit before you glue these down, which I did not do on that last one. That's why one of them is showing. And once I did that, I checked the other. And so I had to fix the other side because I was going a little, a little too fast, a little crazy. And I'm just bending my cardstock just to, um, you know, get the, the paper a little bit more flexible. I'm trying to want to bend over so I just press that against my chipboard so it's a nice clean edge and then press down and flip over and give it a burnish and make sure because I don't think we did this but when you put your chipboard down you definitely want to burnish it and tip tip if you have bad wrists or just you know bad joints in your hands a brayer is that how you say it a brayer works really good so every once in a while, um, obviously being in retail for 30 years, you know, we carry heavy clothing. So um, I get a little tendonitis, you know, in my wrist. But this works great for those that struggle, you know, just with pressure. Just trying to look out for y'all. Okay. And then we are going to press against as we're sealing down and over nice crisp clean edges okay so now here is where we would want to do a little dry fit but I'm just gonna flip in these corners I might have to trim them a little bit because I did leave excess just to make sure yeah that will be good so it's it's better to have um, too much that you need to trim away versus not enough but there's always a way to fix it even if I'm doing um, black cardstock on you know craft chipboard just regular chipboard 
And if I have it peeking through, I will just take a black marker and I have no problem using that marker. So we will see, hopefully I didn't cut too much off, but I have a little bit of the corner on there. Let's see how this is looking. Okay, yes, that'll be fine. And then, okay, and then this side, just flipping in these little corners. It took me forever. I had to literally, I was in one of Ginger's classes, had to ask her, what the heck are you flipping in with your bone folder? Because <laughs> I did not understand it. So it's just kind of making sure the paper does not poke out this way. But once you do this, you'll get the hang of it. And there are tools for mitering corners on your covers. Um, if you need to know of any, let me know. I do have one that I used in the very beginning, but now I just go for it. And it is not always perfect by any means, but I just... I just go. Just be adventurous, people. <laughs> Live on the crafting edge. I'm, I'm killing myself before I even say it. So there's just a little, can you see? Oh my God, I think that's blurry. There's a little bump. Ooh, that hurt my eyes looking at that. So I'm just taking a little bit of that off and we are good. Okay, so now you're gonna do that to both pieces. So we have two of them right here, but now it is time to do the spine. So for the spine, so this is only one and a half here, like so. Let me do this. It almost looks even, like two. Okay, something's off. Ooh, so sorry. You guys are gonna kill me. Not that this is gonna matter, but this sheet is five and a half by 10. It does not matter if you did five by 10. Just wanna say that. So just center this, you know, where you want to, but I'm first going to score one inch at the top and bottom, just again as a guide. And then I will do it at two. And that is just my guide. And I'm going to, so you can see. So I'm just gonna place it there. So if you did the five inches and you score at two and this is off just like, you know, a half of an inch, it's fine. We just need to make sure there's room. So at least you wanna have at least one and a half inches for flaps to attach down. But I just want to make sure because I this is five and a half by ten, not five by ten, but the five by ten still works. I'm pretty sure that's what Tamara like her um, recommendation is anyways is one and a half inches. So she'll do. I'm pretty sure she does her spine size and then um, just adds three inches to that. Okay, so we are just going to get that down. Let's get this back in here. Got that down good. And I will use my art glitter glue for this. So I'm just going to uh, work the paper first. Oh, I 
pink there. Yes, I'm also missing a sheet. I might have to run and get a different piece unless, we'll see. Let me see what I can find in here. Okay, so for now, so Tamara does hers a little different. She cuts these out. Um, I don't, I just leave it. <laughs> but I am linking her video. If you have not seen hers, you definitely want to because she is queen bee for sure. Um, so this is just what we're gonna do here. And you do wanna have a good burnish with all of this. So let's fold it this way. Again, fold it this way. Just really making sure it's all nice and tight. Okay, do the same thing to this side. do these tutorials without shaking the table all the time. Okay, I need to get my... And again, I'm just, I'm really working this paper. Not that you need to, but you can see how it's just nice. on there now I do let me see on this one I think I I don't know if you guys can see this but I angle it just a smidgen not a ton you don't have to but I also want to make sure that it actually is gonna fit my album so I'm just doing a dry fit are we matched up yes we are so you don't have to angle it. I just like to take off a little bit just in case it's um, a little bit off. So I start at, see kind of how there's a little bump there? I start at that little bump to get that off and just a slight miter. It's really, it's barely anything. So I'm gonna take that bump off light miter just like that you still can do your album the traditional way and if you do and you do the hinge different um, the hinge I'm giving you is for Tamara's method if you do your hinge the other way I would recommend doing um, let's see three inches for the pages plus an inch in between, that's four inches. So I would do um, seven and three eighths by eight. And then start your score at two inches, go half inch all the way to six. And that should get you the traditional way. But just definitely test it just in case. Ooh, I have a crooked cut there and I don't like it. There we go. Okay, so now what we are going to do, we're going to turn over this way. I'm just going to take my bone folder and I'm going to come in and press this part down. Because this is where we are going to put our album. And then I'm going to take my tape. You don't have to do this. I just like to make sure I do tape and glue. I don't know why. 
it's not a necessity. You can just glue this all the way down. If you do score tape all the way on it, do not go all the way to the edge because you need a little, like a 1 8 inch gap. Okay, so I'm gonna take my tip off just so we can make sure that we're good. And let me do this other side before I forget. So push in towards the chipboard. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna put this up to the very top, like so. We are going to take this off. I don't actually even do mine this way, so. But this is how she does it, and I'll do the other side how I do mine. So just add a little bit of glue here. If you go up too close, you will get glue you'll see in the seam. And it's okay too, but just double check and if you do, clear it out fast. You don't want that on your album. Okay, so I'm going up to here, pressing in. So that is, I believe how Tamara does hers. We're just gonna burnish that down. You always have to, with any type of adhesives, give it a good press so you can make sure it's glued to both surfaces. It is not a Tiffany tutorial if she is not throwing stuff around on the table. Okay, so now you see we have that. We're gonna do the other side. I'm going to do this here. We'll add our glue. I already see it. So I just want to show you guys. I just got a little carried away bending. Can you see just a little? Ooh, that's blurry. Oh my gosh, that hurts. But there's a little um, tear there. And everyone's always, you know, freaking out about that or throwing their project away. Heck no. I'm not wasting my project. So I just kind of bend it back a little bead, a little micro bead, fold it right back over into place, and boom, can't see because it's blurry, but tip tip, it's fixed. Do not throw your projects away, people, no. So it does happen sometimes and it's okay, but there's ways to fix it. Okay, so we're gonna get our glue in here again. That glue is really beating up off that artisan. Okay, and then we're gonna take our other piece. So this is just another way that you can do it. I just butt it up and get it all lined up. And Voila, it's together. So either way, you do what makes you feel comfortable. So we have a good burnish. So now our book, the reason why it's called the Lay Flat Method is because it lays flat, people. So there you go. And the piece that I forgot to bring up, which I always, <laughs> every tutorial, <laughs> I forget, is the piece to lay down here. So typically, I will use just a scrap piece of paper. So any paper that's on you know, my desk, as long as it's covering this up, but you could do the same size here. I just try not to because it builds up the bulk in the same spot. So I either try to go shorter or go longer so the bulk isn't built in the exact same, like with the edge. Um, okay, so what you, you do need to have is I just go slightly under the, the height of my book. But let me see, do I have any cardstock in here? I have everything else, but okay. No, hold on one second. Seeing the amongst yourselves.
things have me doing a workout. Okay, I just went and grabbed a sheet to show you. But, so our book is eight high. So I just go under eight just a little bit. And let's see, of course, that is the exact same size. So I'm just taking it down to five. You can do the exact eight inches if you want to. Again, it's up to you, but I just do it just a little bit off. So you just stick it just down like that. And, hmm, because I want to make sure if you use glue, and I don't have much of that, so we're going to have to use glue on this one. But if you use glue, it has to be on there really good around this part. Because again, you don't want bubbles. No bubbles, please. So I'm just going to... It's just best to follow Tamara, especially at this point. But this all works. I just want to be able to give you guys the idea of what it would look like. So we got that on there. We are going to burnish this baby down. Put that in there good and just kind of press and seal around the fold is most important. Okay, and I just, I'm just lightly bending that over again. And you could do this with decorative paper if you wanted to. Like you can do decorative paper like all the way over. There's a lot of different options that you can do. Oops, I just keep hitting that thing. Okay, let's get this bent. There we go. Okay, so now we have our cover. So when doing the, the hinge, which I think I said, did I have the wrong? Yes, it's supposed to be four inches, so we're going to take off a half inch. So, tip tip, when doing Tamara's method, or any method actually, of course the yard people want to come right now as I'm doing a video. Um, I literally, if it's, you know, depending upon how much you want in between your gussets, but for this, I take the hinge for each page so each page has you know one inch because it's a half that you have two half inches that you fold in half so that sounded crazy okay let's try this again how many pages you have in your book is one inch so we have three pages so that's three inches in between those pages I have two half inches so that's one inch so that is four four inches that's all you need for Tamara's method. Now, if you're doing the other hinge, you would have your four and then however much you want as your wing. So your wing should always be around one and a half or more um, just to make sure it's totally secure. So if you are doing four inches and you want just one and a half, then that's because you're gonna have one and a half on one side, one and a half on the other side of the spine that is three inches so your measurement would be seven by your height I really can't believe the yard people are here right now oh my goodness okay so I'm just scoring down a half inch just like so the only thing will be is that I cannot glue this down yet I'm gonna show you guys where it goes um, because 
we need to have um, decorative paper laid down. So putting my mat back, and if you want one of these scoreboards and mat, you can get this from Country Craft Creations. I think she still has some in stock, and I will link that below too. But I do, I don't know, I do like this better than my Martha and We Are Memory Keepers because I do have like five other folders, or not folders, scoreboards. So I'm going to take off just like a sixteenth of an inch, if that. I want to make sure this, this um, half inch is slightly smaller than this one, and you'll see why in a second. And, oh! Oh, they're out there talking now. They're literally right below this, this window. So same thing here. We're just going to take off a smidgen. Okay. Hey, people, this is just real life over here. So you're going to have to hear the yard, people. And then, oh my goodness, I forgot my square tape. Okay, we're just gonna glue it. <laughs> I need to have like two craft rooms just ready to go. Okay, so I'm gonna fold this first. So she does it where it's really, truly like an invisible hinge. Gosh, I don't know that I can do this like this. And you can accordion fold it, but I'm just going to do it like this, and then like this. Okay. Oh my gosh, can you hear me? I don't know. I put the glue on the smaller side. Your glue, your score tape, whichever. So great thing about our glitter glue, it does, uh, you know, um, adhere very quickly. Okay, so we have that. Let's do this other end. this before because I will use this base okay there we go so they I mean I'm just dying like just right here under this window and there isn't even really much grass there with the dog on this side, so I don't even know what they're mowing. But, <laughs> yeah, and they're supposed to be here two days ago, so that's annoying. But at least they're here, and I can't complain because we have really amazing yard people. Okay. So, now giving it a good crease. Oh, I'm glad I did this cover separately because this is taking way longer than it should and it's a hot mess as usual. <laughs> oh my goodness, okay. So, this is now our hinge, just like this. And again, so, oh, trying to do it where I don't, Gosh, that hurts my eyes looking at it. So it is a little bit shorter, and that's mainly so it doesn't go beyond this when we stick it down. 
So that's why we just shave off just a smidgen. It doesn't have to be a lot. And then I'm going to, let me put my tip back in here. I'm just gonna miter my corners. You don't have to do that on these. There's a lot of people that don't, but I don't know. Ginger told me to, so I do it. And I just do it slightly because it's already um, slightly shorter than the actual pages. The pages are seven and a half and we made this seven and three eighths. And all this does is just it's supposed to help, you know, fit the pages on there. Okay, so we are pretty much done. So we have our album. Now you're gonna go ahead and stick this in here. You can make tick marks with your ruler if you want to. So you can center your ruler on here, which I love, this Tim Holtz ruler. You could make little tick marks because there's a center. So tick, 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 and line it up that way, top and bottom when you glue this down. But if you wanna do it like the actual project, I put down design paper. So I matted and did my design paper first. So, and then I put my spine down. So up to you how you wanna do it. And when you do that, I'm just gonna show you so you would have this down. Then all you do, and I always start with my back page first. Let me just take this out. So here is page three. I put my hand in here. So I have it where it's open. Imagine this is stuck down. And I do mine with score tape, but you can do glue. And I put mine on and I lay it like where I want it. And I leave just a little bit extra room. So if I do score tape, these are a half inch. I will do usually like a quarter inch score tape so I don't have any you know, adhesive showing. And if you do glue, don't get your glue all the way down either. You can go down to the bottom, but when you have a book that has a lot of flips and flaps, the flaps will get caught on here and eventually start bending and catching each time you go like this. So I do it like that. I turn it. I take my other page, which I don't know that we're ever able, uh, gonna be able to do that here. And I don't like to put my pages in like I like to have my pages out so I can lay out everything look at it then I put everything in once the pages are done then I do my cover so I do decorate my pages first then I'll come back even though I pick out my cover sheets first of what I want on my cover so I will come in here get it on there but before I make sure it's totally glued I just lift this one up in my even Okay, and I bend it over, imagining this is stuck down, and then I'll go like this and seal it down. So just so you can kind of see. So hopefully that is helpful. If you have any questions, please let me know. But I do want to show the one last part that we talked about. Is this one here. So Again, you can, you know, if you want it exactly centered, go for it. I'm just eyeballing about where I want it. Gluing that up there. Let's see, that might drive me crazy. That is, ooh, looky there, that is perfectly centered. Okay. And then again, let's just do, do I have, where's my pencil? I don't have my pencil, oh, there it is. So I wanted to only have two and a quarter showing. That's how I did the album. So I'll just make a little tick. And you can put this down now and glue it down. I'm just gonna say when you do that, I would leave a little bit of room for when you put your design sheet. So you could either tuck your design sheet in or you can leave it where there's some white. It's up to you. So we're just gonna do it like this. So I'm leaving still a little bit of room. 
And again, just eyeballing, centering it. And then you have a nice little flap. Okay, so I think that is everything. Let's just take a peek. I wanna make sure I didn't miss anything. So here's the little flap we just did. Again, you can make your own pocket with white cardstock or do it with design paper like I did here. You have your albums, you will have your four pullout or your three pullouts. And I didn't mean albums, I meant pages. Um, I did take um, design paper into the gusset, so they're a little bit shorter than, or a little bit um, smaller than a half inch wide. And we talked about all of that. So I think that's everything. But again, if you guys have questions, let me know. Um, I'm sure there's something that I left out, but I will get back to you as soon as I can if you do ask a question. But hopefully this tutorial was easy for you. Let me know what you think. And again, if you're wanting this, I would get on Country Craft Creations ASAP. It is selling out fast. So thank you guys so much for watching and have fun making this album again. I will link um, my wedding album that I originally did where I got most of this inspiration from as well as my baby album which is the most viewed album. Um, so thank you guys so much for that. I'm still just in awe that that many people want to see my project. So uh, <laughs> thank you so much. And if you haven't um, subscribed already, please make sure that you do so that way you can see future design team tutorials and projects. And if you do like this tutorial, please give your girl a thumbs up. It definitely helps grow my channel and I so appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Bye.